Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, or whatever time it is, uh, ladies and joins. My name is Al, and this is, um, could be, I guess, a C++ tutorial number. Uh, 218. Why do you give this one a special number? Maybe bump it up to 300 or something. Because, as it turns out, I figured it out. I, fi I finally, <laughs> I finally figured out it. The whole, the whole thing, the whole user assist structure, everything I have solved. And I bet you're dying to find out. The answer is, I wonder if anybody, I'm pretty sure that nobody else in the world has figured it out. And it's so simple and I feel so dumb for not figuring it. User assist key. For instance, I don't know. Maybe some. Now this Dieter seems to be the main uh, lead here, I'm trying to figure out what it all is. Let's see now. It would be fun to, to find out that I'm the only person that, well, besides the developers at Microsoft, the only one that actually knows the answer as to what all those funny numbers are. The array. The array that these guys never even noticed. Uh, this has nothing to do with user. This way is a table of blah, blah, blah. Display and manipulate the entries. Program. I should download the source. I have this program. By deed or something or other. It's called. No, that's my program. This is. No, that's my program. That's his program. See? Counter. Now, I don't know why he, he displays the same time twice. It makes it look like he knows more. But th these are. This is one time, and this is that time plus seven hours for me. Um, AM. Why? That doesn't even sound right. PM, oh yeah, 3 a.m., uh, be 10, should be 10 a.m., I don't think he's converted to, oh, UTC, so other way around, 840 plus 7 hours, 9, 10, 12, 1, 2, 3, yeah, that would be 340 on the next day, so there, there's no information there. I don't know what this unknown is. Key. Now I've only done key one. Now he thinks that this might be focus time. These numbers. It's funny. He's got a lot of zeros in there. Flags. I don't know. And that's it. No more. <clears throat> so the, he he hasn't discovered the array. Uh, and you remember how, how that came about? That came about through my that silly little program or utility I wrote to uh, to take a uh, buffer of bytes and print it out as D words, words, and then bytes at every possible offset and see which you know, which offset and which size look correct. And it turned out everything looked like D words. Now, I don't know about you and me. You, uh, one thing I, I can tell you. 
because I'm going to hold off on telling you the answer because, well, you know, it's fun. It's fun to know something nobody else knows. Analysis professionals, registry as well, file time objects. I wonder what this is. The usual, nothing, nothing. Okay, well, let's see if anybody else has figured anything out. Whoops. Artifact. Now, I just, uh, I'm too lazy to sign up to these sites and then, you know, post, post something. I, I've just, like, I, I, I don't fill these things in anymore. This is baloney. It should just allow you to type in your thing, whatever, whatever you want, you know. It's easy to detect, uh, like, thoughts, right. Or you can just have, um... Uh, what do you call it? Capture. That's free. Free service. Capture. Prefetch and user assist. I don't know about this prefetch. No, what is this? Does this look like a user assist entry? This is prefetch. Number of times application was run. It could not. It could be. Yeah. I don't know. Or maybe they're just categorizing. Uh, frustration. Blah blah blah. Obviously something something prefetch. Blah. Performs application of prefetching and speed up loading, sure. Well, because you know what happened is the week changed. And you know how I used to have that column that says week in my UA in my UA view? I took that column away. Because it's of completely no use. It's the same week always for all of, all of the items. As well, <clears throat> that weak thing. Now, dare I, dare I bring this up? Hang on a sec. Okay, <clears throat> you're allowed to see this much <clears throat> so far. You might figure it out as I go along. One of the entries that always comes up in the list is something called UEME. CTL CUA count colon CTOR. Now, uh, as you probably know, CTOR stands for constructor, right? Like when you're looking at the disassembly of something and, you, and a constructor is being called, they always use the abbreviation CTOR for constructor. It might be a compiler generated function or something like that. Uh, now this item happens to be the size of the UA items, 48 bytes, hex, and all the others. So I understand what this is completely. This here is how you would construct one. What you would do if you wanted to construct one of those UA assist items, an empty one, what you would fill it fill in for an empty UA assist item, right? Now I don't need to dump this, but I could dump it. And uh, you'll see that it's, um, you know, uh, the, the array is all BF8s and uh, the last entry is a minus one, first entry is a minus one, so on and so forth. So there's nothing to this thing, right? All it is is how to make one. I happen to just fill them all up with zero and read them in. And then there's another thing, a big long thing, called UME control session. 
Now it turns out that I, I, I discovered by fiddling around that there are three, usually, maybe the first time there might be one, but after enough time, there are three string, wide string entries at these offsets. 1C and then 1C plus 214 and then add another 214 and you get another wide string, null terminated. Uh, and those are three usually program names. Well, all I've seen are program names. And usually those are, those would be like the top three use time usage ones, right? So now I'm, I'm putting those in the title bar. As well, the cur week is the first D word of this struct. So I don't need to, to uh, put a column in for the week. I can obtain the week from the first D word of this struct. So now that part of this struct is understood. And in between the names in these 1C, offset 1Cs, I found that the data is uh, all over the place of, of these sequences, 4D02, everywhere. So I, I figure that's probably a delimiter of some sort. Okay. Now that could be a shifted carried return line feed. Could it be? No, it couldn't be because the difference between carried return and line feed is only uh, uh, ten, uh, 3, right? 10 and 13? No, no, no. It's D and A. A, B, C, yeah. So the difference is 3. And these are not three different. I don't know if, uh, if it has meaning, but I bet if you took this and broke it up into bits of chunks of data delimited by this, you might discover some more information in there. Now, at the time, I was getting Media Classic was the first entry, then DevN. And I had two media classics. No, two dev ends and one media classic. I figured those were the three highest count items for the last however many weeks or for the current week. Uh, Now that's it's funny that I've mentioned this here that, that there's a plus one in the un, my still unknown field the one remaining unknown field uh, has a plus one in that unknown thing that we know sometimes is turned and becomes one when we request that that item not be displayed in here. Notice, by the way, that services is being, is being displayed here, right? Uh, and also that it came up as an MSC file in the list. That there might be a connection there between the, the fact that this... I wonder if I click on this Anyway, I can't run it yet because I'm displaying the new thing. Now, I should have... The reason I blame myself for, for not noticing it is because I'm on here there's a tutorial that I did myself on the, on the important characteristic of a certain type of number. And um, <laughs> and I think I even showed that BF8 was a special was a special sequence to do with the, that special kind of number. I want, let me check and see if I can find it. Well, I I, I did discuss that thing, but I, I didn't come up. I, I didn't show any any really more than one example. <clears throat> okay, 
Well, you've waited this long, I guess it's time now for me to, to uh, demonstrate the, uh, for you. First, the inspiration. The inspiration was that the week changed, finally. Uh, and so, uh, now if I run the program, uh, long program. I have two versions now, one release and one debug, and they have their own histories. Um, actually, it's not showing it in here. That's good. Let's just squeeze that away. The week I now indicate up here, um, because uh, I can get it out of the control session structure, and uh, these are just the the net strings are usually too long, so I just put the, the file names of the three strings that appear in that session thing. Now, you, you'll notice that the week just changed, and uh, it's giving dev and, and sysman as being, having had, you know, the most, um, I guess they probably have the highest count. Sist man, where it's sist man. Here's dev end. Well, let's see, well, it's certainly not that big. These are, of course, all since the week changed, everything got reset back, right? I didn't save one prior. No, I should have saved earlier. I'll save this one anyway. <clears throat> uh, yeah, now, so the week changed, and so therefore all those number, those funny numbers changed. And I started working with the funny numbers and trying to hook it up the funny numbers with these negative values, you know, in hex and everything. You can see me strugg struggling up here trying to figure it out, you know, taking these differences and uh, trying to see if anything matched. Then it occurred to me, and as soon as it occurred to me, I knew it was the right answer. It had to be, even before I'd proven it, uh, that uh, those funny numbers wouldn't be very funny if they were floating point values. Let's take for now, I, I'm going to give you another review, a second review on how 32 bit floating point values uh, numbers, according to the IEEE standard which I've got down here, how they work. Here it is, single precision binary format for a 32-bit signed floating point value. It turns out that they're using signed, those are signed floating point values. Okay, well, it could be unsigned, but it would be pretty damned unlikely, given the values that come out. And now the way it works, again, is as follows. The first bit is a signed bit. So if this is a 1, the value is negative. So let's take our, our friend BF8, which I uh, actually cast to a float and printed it out. And uh, I, got a, I got an answer that made me know for sure that, that my hunch was correct. But let's work it out slowly. Let me take this, and we'll go by the book. So we're going to do BF80000, okay? Now, 
in binary whoops oh that's my stupid thing that's BF80 Splits into four, of course. One zero one one. One zero one. Well, I could have done that one in my head. And the rest zero. Right? According to the IEEE standard, which we can refer to which we can refer. The first bit is the sign bit, that's bit 31, that goes there. The next eight bits uh, are the exponent biased or not. Whether they're biased or not, eight bits go for the exponent. Okay, oops. Uh, oops. And then the rest is a, is a hidden one always for the remainder, for the remaining bits. The mantissa, this is called the mantissa, which is 20, uh, 23 bits, but there's a hidden 24th bit, which is always one. So it's always one point something times 2 to the something. Okay, the sign bit here tells us that our value is negative, so uh, it's minus something. This here number is, um, that's a 7, that's an F, 7F, okay? So our exponent value is 7f, and in order to get the uh, exponent for our number, we take 2 to the e, and our exponent, minus 127, which happens to be 7f, okay? So our exponent, so we have 1 point something times 2 to the uh, 127 minus 127, which is 0, and that equals 1. <clears throat> okay, so that's that's the multiplicand, or the thing that we multiply by in the end. And our Our mantissa has the value of 1. Okay, there's always a hidden 1 here. Okay, so the value in the end then is minus 1 times 1 times 1, which equals minus 0. 0.3. Okay? So this is uh, BF80 as a 32-bit signed floating point number is minus 1.000, exactly minus 1, not approximately. All right. Now, as soon as I saw that, I knew that, the, that it's correct. Right? <laughs> Because that's what they put, whenever the, something is undefined or not being used, they always put minus one. And that there is exactly the value minus one. So all of the, those table entries are filled initially with the value minus one until the week changes and something gets stored there. All right. Now let's take a look at uh, some, some of the ones... Um, 
that did change. Uh, unfortunately, these are not in hex. Uh, you see now, you can't see the value, but this one became uh, 3F80000. This, this entry became 3F8000. Turns out. Uh, now that's equal to 1, by the way. So the, the, one of the entries became that. Okay, now I, in, uh, in bits. That's zero, one, one, and two zeros. Let me just copy that. Unfortunately, my thing doesn't extend the zeros out. Okay, I used those. Uh, no, that's all right. I need this one. I need eight bits for my exponent. Here's my exponent value, and the rest is all. There's a hidden one here, and three zeros, and these are, that's up to here. And then there are four more nibbles worth of zeros. Okay. Uh, now this is exactly identical to the minus one case, the only difference being that the sign bit is zero. So this one is equal to 1.000, exactly one. That turned out that this one became one. All right. Uh, now, uh, this this here doesn't have a valid entry, so it's just got a minus one here. Um, now it it turns out that none of the other ones became ones. Uh, I want to I want to show the hex values as well alongside with these. Can I do that easily? Am I running under the debugger? Yeah. Like what I was printing before. I could, yeah. Okay, where I do the printout. I'm printing the columns. That's here. This is what I had before. This is what I have now. I'm going to do percent f and then inside here kind of in brackets I'll put the uh, the float interpreted as a d word well, I don't really have to cast it Casting has been done by by uh, the casting's been done by the print uh, printf logic it takes whatever is given and matches it up against this format string and interprets it thusly. So this should make it interpret it as a integer value. Uh -oh.
So the, that would be what would have been the previous printout. <sighs> Missing the semicolon before. Yeah, that's true enough. Just the same value, but <clears throat> as a hex number. And for the one I s saved there, it's not. Yeah, it'll it'll just be what it is. No, it's not right. No, not interpreting it right. Oh, I probably got to put a zero here. That's right. Because this really expects a double. In fact, I probably had to. I could cast this as a double. I'm not sure. You gotta do some trickery to get it to line up. No. Hmm. Do that. Well, that works. I don't know how it does doubles anyway because a double is eight bytes, and this percent f is supposed to refer to a double. So the compiler has to do some fiddling around. No. All right. Let's just see it as a as a just a that what it was before. Oh wait! No, no, that's right. That's right. It should be three F A percent O A F. I could say D word star address of that and then star it. Zero. It doesn't work. I don't understand. Trust me, it's three. It's uh, it's three. It's three F eight, and that's how you get one. It's the only way to get one. There we go. So 3F8, that is uh, as a float, that's 1.0. And all of these other ones um, work out to those fractional values.
Only one became three of eight. Now, I'm too bad I lost the other history. Uh, wasn't one of these a minus one? Yeah, okay. It's too bad I lost the other history because uh, I had a whole, this, this whole thing full of numbers, right? And then we could have a look at them. Uh, okay, so the, you can see now that as a D word, it's just 3F8, but as a float, the compiler does some funny thing and converts that, this expression, into a double, and it must push an extra zero onto the stack, but there's no other explaining it, because a double is, is uh, eight bytes. I just, I said run up to here, so we'll see what the compiler actually does with this expression. Okay, FLD. See, it's subtracting 8 from the stack. Fl FLD is a thing that converts a, fl a float to a double. I'm pretty sure. But that is, uh, that is something that goes into the floating point unit. If you look at registers and include the floating point unit, uh, it's going to, I think it's going to use it. We should see something happen in here. There, see? So that FLD actually used the floating point unit to do a conversion. Now uh, it's, I guess, restoring the stack. Subtract. No, you would add if you would restore the stack. It's subtracting from the stack in order to store something. Now it's doing, I see, so floating point store at ESP, the result, the result of the last. So subtract from stack 8. And now the floating point unit is going to store the result of this operation at position ESP. Uh, where is ESP? Here, can I grab that? No. It should restore. It should store an eight-byte value right there, and it did. Okay, uh, the value being that whatever it is, it's a floating point value. Now it's pushing onto this. It must. Well, it hasn't, doesn't have to push anything on the stack. That's a push already. Subtract eight, right? The rest of the thing it's pushing, I guess this is maybe the string, format string, it gets pushed last, 5.9b, thirty. it's not an address, oh, 5.29b, thirty. Name SD, oh, percent F, see? So that's the uh, format string. Uh, and now, the last thing it's pushing is uh, something that's lo a local variable. 
This has been done. I'm not sure what this is. Well, DM. Some free memory, I see. Okay. This is al allocated memory, I suppose, uh, where the result goes. The result is going to go into the, a buffer allocated by this TF string. I guess. Wait a minute, I haven't done it yet. Well, it's still allocated memory. And there is some answer. Uh, not important, but as you can see, it, it uh, floats are not treated as floats when it comes to these format specifiers. So the answer is uh, uh, that that is solved. That's a solved problem. All of these columns are pretty much solved except for the unknown one. These are floats. Okay, now I believe, and that we'll find out next week, that one of them is going to always, the highest one is going to have a value 1. And these are uh, probably fractions of whatever this is. Um, and the, it, it doesn't matter what the actual count was, right? All this thing is for is for determining which uh, processes are getting the higher percentage time, right? And it seems, according to this list, if I sort by that, uh, first thing, dev and, then um, notepad cubed, then chrome, then media player, virtual dub, adobe, UA view, and so on, down the list. The very last one being this thing I ran just once. Okay, and now the next week it'll show a different, uh, it'll have an, another array of um, floating point values which may sort to a different, uh, which may give a different arrangement of these things. And that's how the uh, UA Assist can use this information, which is in a nice form. Clear all that out, which is in a nice form in a table of floating point values. Uh, it's e as easy to sort as I just did right there, right? To see what's being used most and, and whatnot. And now you'll see one of the cyst men has died, and I won't, I've got two dead hands here. So there you go. Now you know what I know. Uh, and as far as I can tell, you can check online. Besides the people, the developers at Microsoft are the only people on this planet that know what these columns stand for. All right. See you.